Hi. Let's understand these uh, special types of potassium channels which are present uh, at a variety of places in the human body. The oxygen sensitive potassium channels and ATP sensitive potassium channels. Let's try to understand how they function. First thing, any potassium channel uh, present in any plasma membrane or uh, even in the membrane of organelles, there are certain potassium channels. The potassium channel generally is uh, predominantly allowing the potassium to leak out because potassium concentration is higher on the inside and lower on the outside in the ECF. Therefore, by concentration gradient, potassium uh, is expected to leak out of the cell. With this background, let's try to understand how these channels function and what do they achieve. The first point is, these channels are present at such a places in the body which are associated with energy balance. Either directly uh, by generation of ATPs or lack of ATPs or presence or lack of oxygen. Let's uh, take the example to understand these. First thing is that in the systemic vessels, the hypoxia leads to vasodilation. The vessels dilate. This is in systemic blood vessels. In pulmonary circulation, hypoxia leads to vasoconstriction. It means the same kind of stimulus, hypoxia, is dilating the vessels somewhere and constricting the vessels uh, elsewhere. How is that possible? Let's try to understand the mechanism behind it. First of all, whether vasodilation or vasoconstriction it is because of the smooth muscle cells lining the blood vessels. This is just a diagrammatic representation that the smooth muscle cells which are in the wall of blood vessels, if they contract, the vessel will constrict. If the smooth muscle relaxes, the vessel will dilate. Also try to understand, uh, let's try to understand this why hypoxia leads to vasodilation uh, everywhere in the body but in the pulmonary vasculature in the lungs it causes vasoconstriction both is uh, beneficial at respective places for example uh, everywhere in the body hypoxia means there is a low oxygen supply to a particular tissue and therefore the vessel dilates so that more blood can be brought into that region and the hypoxia can be corrected. So that's uh, beneficial in the systemic vessels. What about the pulmonary vessels? In the pulmonary vessels, uh, blood supply is basically for gas exchange. That the oxygen is uh, taken up into the pulmonary blood and carbon dioxide is given out into the alveolus. So if there is hypoxia in, in, the, in some region of the lung, then the blood flow in that region will be a wasteful expenditure. It will be a waste because the, the alveolus is not functioning. It's hypoxia and therefore uh, blood flow will be useless. What happens therefore is that the blood vessel in that hypoxic region will constrict and it will divert the blood to a better ventilated alveolus. So hypoxia causing vasoconstriction in the lung is for achieving this purpose that the blood flow can then be diverted. This vessel 
near the hypoxic region it will constrict and the blood will be diverted to a better ventilated alveolus so the two different effects both are beneficial obviously to the body let's try to understand how it is achieved in the lungs in the pulmonary vascular smooth muscle cell the smooth muscle cell lining the blood vessels the potassium channel uh, that is present in the membrane of these uh, vascular smooth muscle cells is the o2 sensitive potassium channel oxygen sensitive potassium channel so if this is a smooth muscle smooth muscle cell now let's uh, magnify this smooth muscle cell and in its membrane there is this o2 sensitive potassium channel upon hypoxia this o2 sensitive potassium channel will close it cannot remain open because there is lack of oxygen lack of oxygen lack of atp the potassium channel cannot remain open it closes so o2 sensitive potassium channel has closed because of the hypoxia what will be the result potassium cannot leak out we have already seen this that potassium is predominantly an ion that goes out of the cell from inside to outside now that cannot happen and because it cannot ha happen potassium cannot go out now potassium intracellular potassium comes near the membrane it can't go out because that o2 sensitive potassium channel has closed and potassium uh, the intracellular potassium coming near the membrane on the inside means positive charges getting lined up on the inside of the membrane it means what it means the cell is depolarized and consequently the cell will contract so smooth muscle cell is depolarized because of the potassium intracellular potassium coming near the membrane on the inside of the membrane this is membrane excitation it will result in the smooth muscle contraction and because smooth muscle cells contract there would be vasoconstriction so this is how hypoxia will lead to a closure of o2 sensitive potassium channels resulting in the depolarization of the smooth muscle cell and therefore the contraction of smooth muscle and vasoconstriction coming to the systemic vasculature systemic vascular smooth muscle cell in the case of systemic blood vessels their walls have smooth muscle which has atp sensitive potassium channel there is atp sensitive potassium channel in the membrane of these smooth muscle cells here is a blood vessel in the wall there are smooth muscle cells and in the membrane of these smooth muscle cells there is atp sensitive potassium channel now atp sensitive potassium channel is going to behave in a similar manner and it would uh, close or not close depending upon the availability of atp and that in turn would be on the availability of uh, oxygen so what happens is uh, in simple terms if there is hypoxia in this region hypoxia will generate less atps as i mentioned in the uh, opening remarks that uh, these channels and their functioning is related to the energy metabolism energy production so hypoxia would mean less atp production this atp sensitive potassium channel it works like this uh, when it senses the atp inside the cell the channel will close atp sensitive potassium channel closes now here because of the hypoxia in the region there is a less atp production and therefore this channel cannot close it remains open 
the, the potassium channel in the membranes of the smooth muscle cells. This channel remains open because of lack of ATP. Causing what? Causing potassium to leak out. Potassium leaks out of the cell. That means the cell will be hyperpolarized. Positive ions are going out. So inside of the cell would be excessively negative, hyperpolarized. And that means smooth muscle cell we are talking about, it would not contract. It cannot contract, it is hyperpolarized, it will relax. Relaxation of the smooth muscle would mean the blood vessel will dilate and the hypoxia will be corrected in that region. Therefore, hypoxia, same stimulus, behave differently in two different places, both being uh, both working in the favor of the body, of course. Uh, let's just take another examples of uh, these uh, O2 sensitive and ATP sensitive potassium channels. O2 sensitive potassium channel is found at a few more places in the body. Most important, most notable is carotid body. Carotid body uh, contains chemoreceptors, the chemosensitive cell, that is a glomus cell. As we are aware, in the common carotid artery, there is a carotid body and in the arch of aorta, there are several aortic bodies. So we have two carotid bodies, one on each side and several aortic bodies. Inside these carotid and aortic bodies, there are chemosensitive cells or glomus cells. Now these cells are expected to sense hypoxia and when they sense the hypoxia, they will send the signals via 9th and 10th cranial nerves which will then stimulate uh, the respiratory center and then the hypoxia will be corrected because uh, ventilation will be stimulated and more oxygen will be taken hypoxia will be corrected. At the same time, it will also send signals to the vasomotor center in the medulla. Now the point here is, how is it that these cells, glomus cells, they sense the hypoxia and generate the signals. Again, they have O2 sensitive potassium channels in their membranes. In the membrane of these glomus cells, the chemosensitive cell, this O2 sensitive potassium channel, upon sensing the hypoxia, it will close. And that means uh, potassium cannot leak out of the cell. So potassium will come near the membrane. Potassium coming near the membrane means membrane excitation. So glomus cell generated the receptor potential. It, it was excited. And uh, I mean, it, it was depolarized and it will then generate the impulses in the 9th and 10th cranial nerves. So another important uh, location for uh, O2 sensitive potassium channel. Of course, again, related or linked to the uh, energy metabolism because if there is hypoxia, obviously what is going to suffer is the energy metabolism. And therefore, it is sensed here and it is corrected by stimulation of ventilation and uh, also the blood pressure. Uh, ATP sensitive potassium channel. What is the important location for ATP sensitive potassium channel? It's present in the pancreatic beta cell. The cell that is going to synthesize and secrete insulin in response to increased plasma glucose and then that glucose under the influence of insulin will enter the cells and will be metabolized. So again related to the energy metabolism. How does it work? Let's take uh, a magnified view of the pancreatic beta cell and let's see how insulin will be released in response to increased plasma glucose. So after every meals, there would be increased plasma glucose. This plasma glucose would enter the cell, pancreatic beta cell, using, it, using a transporter called as GLUT2. 
once it enters the cell it undergoes glycolysis this glycolysis this is the metabolism of pancreatic beta cell so this glycolysis will generate the ATPs and once the ATPs are generated our candidate the ATP sensitive potassium channel it will close so once the channel is closed this is just a diagrammatic uh, presentation once the channel is closed potassium cannot leak out potassium is expected to leak out of uh, via all the channels now it can't leak out so potassium starts accumulating inside the membrane from the core of the cell potassium has come near the membrane it can't leak out so it accumulates near the membrane which means what positive charges have accumulated inside the membrane and positive charges accumulating inside the membrane means membrane depolarization so membrane has got depolarized it's a voltage change this voltage change is sensed by the voltage gated calcium channels the voltage change was sensed and voltage gated calcium channel will open this channel opens it means now the calcium will flow in calcium will come in and finally this calcium will cause insulin uh, to be released by exocytosis that is how insulin is released uh, in response to plasma glucose increase in the plasma glucose but more important part our uh, discussion was related to the ATP sensitive potassium channel so energy metabolism is where this channel is linked everywhere in the body whether ATP sensitive or even O2 sensitive potassium channel now there is a category of drugs called as uh, sulfonylureas sulfonylurea category is anti-diabetic drugs and they are said to have receptor on this uh, potassium channel so it's called as SUR sulfonylurea receptor this sulfonylurea receptor is present on these this protein and therefore when the drugs bind with this receptor there will be closure of ATP sensitive potassium channel resulting in the further events and release of insulin so sulfonylureas are insulin secretagogues they work via ATP sensitive potassium channels so these are uh, some of the places where those O2 sensitive and ATP sensitive potassium channels are present the point that should be noted is the ATP sensitive potassium channel closes when ATPs are generated uh, whereas O2 sensitive potassium channel it closes upon hypoxia when there is less of oxygen then the channel closes so here increased ATP production and there lack of oxygen is closing the potassium channel so that is a, a key difference between O2 sensitive and ATP sensitive potassium channel one is sensing the increased ATP levels other is sensing the lack of oxygen and therefore the places that it is present in the body uh, lack of oxygen the channel will close and it will help indirectly in the energy metabolism further as we have seen so that uh, uh, is a comparison of O2 sensitive and ATP sensitive potassium channels.